Michael Waltrip drove to the winner's circle to celebrate victory in the 2001 Daytona 500. How could he have known that the seminal moment of his career would be forever shrouded in tragedy? amazing. People that didn't know me a month before, now we're all standing in victory lane celebrating winning the greatest race in the world. Everything was just so cool and it remained that way for probably 20-30 minutes. We kept watching on the camera and this looked bad and, and you can tell by the people around the, the, the car even though it was in a long shot. Then the ambulance came up and then Dale was taken out and placed in the ambulance. And then we followed, watched the ambulance going to the hospital. And the ambulance was traveling virtually at walking pace, which meant either a broken back or death. Okay, another subject. Michael Walter finally gets his first win after all these tries. Any reaction? Um, very happy for him. I just wish he could enjoy it a little more because his boss was not there to help him. Okay, we just got work while Earnhardt's driver, Michael Waltrip, celebrates, Dale Earnhardt rides the back of an ambulance to the Halifax Medical Center. The last thing you want to do is overstate the drama of the situation, and yet you don't want to understate the possibility that, that things could go really bad. I was in Victory Lane and everybody obviously, it was a lot of celebration, a lot of happy people and everybody seems to be just overly elated and Michael's got the trophies and Michael's being Michael. What was begin beginning to be more and more odd is no Earnhardt was there. And I remember thinking, where's Dale? I mean, how come he's not here yet? And Dale Jr., how come he's not here? I, I, I'm sure they're coming, right? John Graham, who is the uh, president of the racetrack, came over and he said, hey, who's going to accept the owner's trophy? And I said, well, Dale will be here any minute. Just Dale or Therese or one of these, somebody will take the trophy. And he says, no, Dale, this is Dale's, they're taking Dale over to the hospital. So for the owner's trophy, John basically did the Victory Lane interview with me, and then he had me stand in the pictures. As soon as we got done with that first photo, I looked over and Ken Schrader walked into Victory Lane. Mikey, you just won Daytona 500. What a big deal. That was such an important uh, moment for him. I love Mikey like a brother, and I wanted to tell him what I thought the deal was. He made fun of me all the time, you know, about, about not winning, and uh, finally there's somebody I know coming to say congratulations. I saw him and I said, can you believe it, Schrader? I won the Daytona 500. And, uh, he just grabbed me and said, it's not good. And I was like, well, it's not really that bad that I won the Daytona 500, is it? I just told Mikey that, uh, you know, that I was awful happy for him and stuff. But, no, listen, Mike, we got a, we got a, we got a big problem here. I'm extremely worried about Dale. I remember him looking at me, you know, and it's just like, like it didn't register because, you know, he waiting for Dale to come in. And so that pretty much told me that, um, you know, the celebration was over. You know, what I thought was the greatest day ever was heading in a direction that would make it the, the worst day ever. By then, I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm wanting to go to Victory Circle, but I don't know if I should. And we're on a quick off. Uh, the, the race went long because of the red flag, and we were at the top of the hour. And so we couldn't stay and give a, a report about any. Nobody knew anything. They were, everybody was real hush-hush about it. And nobody was telling us anything, so we had to go off the air. Well, thanks, John. We all knew Michael Waltrip had a fast car here in Speed Weeks. I tried to get 
But Darrell, did you think Both Larry and Darrell to concentrate on the win, on victory lane, on analyzing the race and what had happened while I tried to piece together all the information we had so that we didn't say the wrong thing, but we also didn't go away leaving people to think that everything was all right. We're jubilant for the Waltrips and our prayers are with the Earnhardt family. John? Well, I was gonna to go to Victory Circle, but my friend Andy uh, Kespacito, he's a deputy sheriff, he was gonna take me down through the crowd to get to Victory Circle. So when I, when I take off the headset and I turn around, he's standing at the top of the stairs shaking his head. And uh, <clears throat> Big Andy's wife works, she worked at the Halifax Hospital in the emergency room. She had called him and told him to get DW and get down here uh, because the they didn't One survive. road led to Victory Lane. The other carried a life in the balance. The sport's biggest day had become a cacophony of celebration and sorrow. I couldn't, I, I didn't know what to do. I don't even, I, you know, even to this day, I don't know why I went to the hospital. I really don't. Uh, family, NASCAR, you know, although everybody that, that needed to be there was there. We're, in, we're just in the emergency room. We're, we're inside, and it's not a waiting room outside. We are, like, inside. We're not in front of Dale. They got Dale screened off and everything, so... Um, but we just know it's not pretty. I can't remember everyone that was in the room, but whoever came in, I think it was a doctor, came in and said, we lost Dale. I have his son standing next to me. There's nobody in this room. So... I take care of him. And we just all sit there. And... Uh, not knowing what to expect next. And... Uh, I remember some of us just had our heads down and uh, it's just it was a bad day. I go into the room where all the team members are at. And I remember just looking at all of their faces and just this junk. So, so that's kind of where we all were. <laughs>